Welcome to Queen the Greatest, where we are celebrating a truly groundbreaking collaboration. It's Queen and Maurice Bejar's Ballet for Life. Why can't we just be friends? Inspired by Queen's Made in Heaven album and driven by the desire to shine a light on the AIDS pandemic and the tragedy of the people who died too young because of it, the internationally renowned choreographer Maurice Bejar approached Queen with an extraordinary vision for a new ballet. I met Maurice Bejar at the uh, unveiling of the statue to Freddie. He was an entrancing man, and uh, these steely blue eyes um, that would um, he lit up and uh, he, he would carry you along with his enthusiasm. We were delighted that somebody wanted to do something so creative with the music. So, um, you know, why not? How could we possibly say no to a giant of another discipline in art, you know, coming to us and, and asking us if he can use our music. What a wonderful thing to happen. I mean, yeah. With Queen's extensive and eclectic catalogue of music to choose from, Beja began to create a ballet that interpreted some of the band's most iconic songs in completely new ways. Beja also cleverly added some music from Mozart into the mix. And as the ballet took shape, he then turned to Gianni Versace to design the costumes. We always had a, a rule of wearing either black or white on stage. And Gianni Versace did the wonderful costumes. And uh, he stuck to that sort of rule. And they're very immaculate and, and, and I think they look terrific. I feel like dancing. <laughs> Maurice really took on board some of the aspects of our live performance, even including colouring, colours and lighting. It looks very alive, it looks very modern. In January 1997, the ballet had its premiere in Paris and included a performance by Queen that would prove to be another milestone in the band's history. The first proper public show was due to be in Paris and we talked about being there and we said we'd like to be there. Yeah, because it's, it's a strange thing for us to do. Firstly, we haven't played for God knows how long. We don't have our singer. It's one song, and you have to get a whole production for one song, one performance. And then this message came from Elton saying, let's play. <laughs> And that was John's last ever performance. And uh, I could tell he wasn't happy because he was sort of chain smoking and not very, and very, very nervous and had been severely traumatized by losing Freddie. Deaky, our dear friend John, I think he didn't arrive at the same place as, as we did. And John is there. But John is really so desperately uncomfortable with the whole thing. You can see him kind of, his whole body is sort of reacting against it. And at the end of it, he says, I can never do this again. I can't do this. And it was true. That's the last time he ever played with us, John, in public. I'm not the judge of my work. I love my works. Of course, I love very much the last one. I love very much the one that people love because it's natural. But uh, an artist will never turn to watch his past. Don't you take another, take another piece of my, piece of my heart. The Ballet for Life was a key part of the Queen's story and 25 years later is still very much alive and continuing to tour, entertaining and enthralling audiences around the world. I was very pleased to have the music allied with, um, with Mozart, Versace and Maurice Bejar's wonderful ballet. It took us to another, you know, sphere. It 
did something very big for us. It, it, it changed the way we, we felt about the continuing life of Queen music in the world. And uh, I'm very happy, very proud of that moment in time when Queen music and Mozart and Maurice Bejar came together in one place. Singing, we will.